Hi guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to talk about what it means to pass an argument by value to a function in C++. All right, so we'll see an example of it. We'll talk about what it is, and we'll write a program to see it in action using Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what do we mean when we talk about pass by value? or pass by copy. Those are terms that are interchangeable. What we mean is that you're going to pass an argument to a function in a particular way. And so that particular way is that you're going to make a duplicate. You're going to make a copy. You're going to um, not give the function the original. So imagine if you will, that I have my copy and I wanna give you a copy of my copy of a document. So what would I do? I wouldn't just hand you the original, right? What I would do is I would go to the photocopier, make a copy of it, and then I would pass the document to you by copy. So now we both have our own separate copies of that document, all right? So whatever you do to your copy does not impact me, is the big deal here. We're completely separate people with cons completely separate copies of the same document, the same value, all right? So we have different copies of that value. So we're passing by copy, also known as passing by value and vice versa. So let's write a function that uses, that uses pass by copy, AKA pass by value, right? And this is the default behavior of functions. All right, so we'll create a function called foo and we're gonna, we'll, we'll pass it a character argument by copy. Okay, so we'll just call this a parameter a. All right, and uh, we'll fill in the body of that function here in a second. In main, I'll create a character variable named c and I'll initialize it with a character B. All right, now if I want to call the function, I use the function name, and then I have to pass it an argument. Which argument am I gonna pass it? I'm gonna pass it my C variable. All right, so when I do that, it is as if I have an assignment statement that looks like this, okay? So once that argument is passed, I've taken the contents of C all right, which is the letter B in this case, I've made a copy of it and put it into parameter A, okay? So that value in C, another way of thinking about it, that value in C, which is B, is getting assigned to, or a copy is being made, okay? A copy of what's in C is made and given to A. So when this function calls done, both C and A will have their own individual copies of the letter B. So this is our photocopying. Okay, I'm still gonna have, if this is me, and A is you, when this function call happens, I've made a photocopy, and now I have a copy of B, and you have a copy of B. All right, so, Let's do a little CL statement here that will display the contents of C. And this will be before we call foo. Okay, there's C. And I should probably make a little note here. C before we call foo. All right, and then we'll show the contents of C, the state of my copy See after we call foo. Now, why is that important? Well, you're gonna see here in a second when I uh, define this foo function or when I finish defining it. So what we'll do in here is we'll display the contents of A, all right? So A, the parameter A, A contains um, this when entering, contains when, enter, when entering the function, upon entry, we'll say, upon entry, okay? And then 
what we'll do is we will change your copy. So we'll do something like this. We'll say uh, A equals um, G, all right? So we're gonna change your copy. This is like, I mean, this is this is what we're doing. We're taking, we're taking the character G and we're putting it in A. So that B copy that I gave you right here, B was assigned to A here, but then you just overwrote it. Okay, so your copy of B is gone. My copy, still safe inside of C. All right, we'll see that here in a second. This is what we mean by pass by value or pass by copy. Right? We're independent. The, the argument and the, and the parameter are independent of each other. So parameter A contains upon exit. We'll see it. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Let us hand trace our code and understand what's going on. So line 15, C comes into existence. It's assigned to character B. Line 17 happens. We're going to print out the contents of C. Well, what's in C? The character B. We call the foo function. What happens? The contents of C is copied and given to variable A. So now both C and A at that instance of time have their own independent copies. Okay. So then line eight is going to execute and we're going to see that the contents of A is the character B, right? It's going to say parameter contains upon entry character B, right? Now here we're going to change the contents of A. We're going to trash the B. We're going to toss that and we're going to replace it with G. All right. In the A parameter. Now, once we've done that before the function exits, it'll say parameter A contains upon exit and then we'll see G. The function foo will be done. We'll go back from once we came. And then the question is, what are we going to see when line 21 executes? See after we call foo. We're going to see B because my copy never changed. I never overwrote variable C. Parameter A, argument C, two different variables, two different people, but two separate copies of character B. Foo, in the foo function, you destroyed your copy of B. But in the main function, I kept my copy of B. So let's test it. Let's see what happens. So take a look at that output. C before we call foo. That's this line right here. What's it say? It says it contains B. Primary A contains upon entry. We're right here. What's the contents of A? It's character B, just like we said. Made a copy of B, handed it to you. At that instance of time, we both have our own copy of B. Line nine happens. You destroyed your copy of B. You replaced it with your own character, G. So line 10 happens, and we see parameter A contains upon exit, G. And we go back from whence we came, which is the function call. Now we go back and we examine the contents of C. What's my copy? What am I still holding on to? Line 21 executes. We see that I still have my B. All right, so this is an example of pass by value, also known as pass by copy. The argument and the parameter are independent of each other. A copy of the value that is stored in the argument variable is given to the parameter, not the original. All right. Okay. So that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.